Jamie, I, I was watching you just just cook on the guitar, mate. It was bloody awesome. Like, um, you've always been been great. How, how did you actually come to be a, such an awesome guitarist? Oh, I wish I was as good as everyone else, really. But um, uh, yeah, it's a long story, and probably people would be, um, you know, I don't want to put people to sleep on that one. But um, you know, I just worked my ass off, basically. <laughs> you know, I, I just really um, wanted to do it. You know, I realised when I was about 13 that that's that was what I wanted to do. I heard Zeppelin. Yeah. And that was it, yeah. Blake Sabbath, yeah. and I didn't want to do anything else, so I did all the wrong things, which uh, you know, don't try it at home, but um, <laughs> you know all the wrong things in terms of staying home, practicing, and practicing all day and all night, every yeah. day for months and months and months on end. You know, and if you put that effort in, it pays off, but you can't you can't do it without putting the effort in. You know? yeah. Like, like how many hours a day, seriously? Like, um... I've been through stages where I actually logged, logged it all in a journal. And um, I sometimes put up to um, 12 to 14 hours a day. And you know, I'd get up in the morning, especially yeah. when I was living in the UK. I used yeah. to do it all the time. Get up 8 o'clock in the morning, the missus would go out to work. Yeah. I'd get the guitar out, start working out what I was going to practice. Yeah. And I'd do it all day. Yeah. You know, have dinner, yeah. then um, do it all night. You know, and we thought you were just a freak. You just practice. I work my butt butt yeah. off, really. Yeah. Well, thank you, mate. Thank you. we we appreciate all the work. We really do, eh? Oh, yeah. Just yeah. trying to be as good as all the guys that are good. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of great, great guitar players out there, and you yeah. know, if you want to, you know, like I, I wanted to compete on a world sort of stage. I realised, especially getting over to the UK, that if you didn't work work that hard, that you had no hope. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Until I realised that uh, it was more important what colour pants you wore. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. sort of yeah. I mean, that was a problem, but we'll get to that later. You we know? will, mate. We will. Um, just when, when you were practicing, who who was like driving you? Who was motivating you to to do all those hours? Like what what was your um, influences? Your, your guitar. Influences? Well, I would grab all my favourites. I would um, jam along with a lot of Jeff Beck albums all the time. Ingve Malmsteen, I would jam along with. Jam along with Malmsteen. I'll try to, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't do what he does, but you know, he was brilliant in his way. But uh, at the end of the day, I sort of realised that, um, you know, playing fast in itself wasn't the ultimate means to an end, mm. and it was what you did with them notes that you played in the economy that was also as important. Yeah. So I tried to find a balance between playing all the crusts fast silly stuff and uh, the more feely sort of stuff like the Jeff Beck and all, all the classic players, you know, the Jimmy Pages and all that sort of thing. You know, it's a, it's a bit of a mixture really. Do you actually think um, Eddie Van Halen fucked it up for a lot of guitarists with all this, how many notes you can play in a bar sort of thing like you're saying, the economy type thing? Do you, do you think it was interpreted a bit wrongly with the, the proceeding guitarists? Oh, it was always something I realised really early on was that that was dead before I even started because Eddie writes great songs Van Halen are a great band and everyone went off on the the technical factor and forgot about how good the songs and everything else yeah. were they forgot yeah. to play rock and roll you know yeah i mean he still leaves gaps and stuff so yeah I mean, he's just yeah. a master he's absolutely. absolutely fantastic at what he does and yeah. he can play the most soulful feeling bit of music and then pull out all the stops and do something crazy, but he doesn't rely on the technique, you know. Mm. He cannot play a solo in a song and it'll still be fantastic, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jamie, have, have you got any tips for up, up and coming bands at all? Give up. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding there. <laughs> yeah. um, no, seriously, if you want to do it, you just got to think about it and work out what you're doing and be open yep. to working on what you do and um, reviewing it very thoroughly yeah. and don't think that you're better than anyone else because there's always a heap better bands around every corner so it's down to how much work you want to put in and yeah. how analytical you want to be as to what you do as to how well you will, you will do because if you haven't got all the planets lining up with your band yeah. you're stuffed yeah. you know I mean a lot of the great bands that have made it over the years yeah. 
you know, they might not all, all have been the very best of bands, but they had something special, yeah, whether it was yeah. the Beatles, Zeppelin, uh, Sabbath, ACDC, they all had a magic formula that worked for them. Mm. I mean, even, even something as simple as taking Angus out of his school uniform. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you take that away and that novelty mm. factor that got them noticed mm. might not have got them anywhere near mm. where they are if they were just a band that played the same music. But, but you, you say, like, the the planets are lining. I mean, it's a long way to the top if you want to roll. Or cliche, obviously. But w would you would you agree there's a bit of luck involved? Because, I mean, a little, lot of shit bands do make it. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's what people like. And if they've got a vibe and someone likes it and people get behind them, that's that's understandable. You know, I mean, everyone's different and they're going to have different tastes. But, um, you know, yeah, I mean, no one has a, a right to make it. You know, it's down to how you do it. You know, and it's, you know, looking back now, we I look at all the mistakes that we made back in the day, which were, you could write an encyclopedia on them, you know, because we got everything... Yeah. screwed up and wrong out of ego you know we'd think oh you know we're better than this we're better than that yeah. so we know we don't have to do anything i don't have to think about this yeah you, you know what i mean that's okay. that's um you know and sometimes you throw good things out too but, but i suppose yeah. sometimes when people are telling you so you're so fantastic you know like, oh there's uh, problems with that there's also yeah. major problems with people telling you what to do when they're wrong yeah. which happened big time in the early days yeah. and even pre-trilogy we made some horrendous horrendous mistakes where if you'd stayed true to what you believed mm. which was in basic good old rock and roll, rock and roll yeah. would have been laughing but yeah. they tried to straighten it out and clean it up and get you out of the black t-shirts and <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean and yeah, yeah. all we had to do yeah. was just put a good simple rock and roll Bogan album together, yeah, we'd have yeah. been we would have been laughing, yeah. but we yeah. fucked it up with fucking excuse the French. Yeah, no, we we cocked it up with um, trying to get too clever and mm. too smart and too creative, which was great. But at the end of the day, we didn't need to do that. Yeah. And we stuffed it. We kept stuffing it up all the time as people would give us bad advice. Yeah. You know, and what, in all honesty, by the time we worked out where the problem was. The horse had gone. Everyone was wearing spandex, you know. <laughs> yeah. And that was the end of that, you know. Yeah, yeah. No coming back from that. Yeah. <laughs>